that you brought with you. Hallelujah. Come on, this is another Wednesday evening Bible study. We shouldn't make it no less because it's a Wednesday. Come on, he still want to be praised. He still want to be worshipped. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Father, we, we, we thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come before you tonight. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for any sins we committed. We ask you, Father, to uh, anoint, anoint, anoint us tonight, Father, to teach this lesson. Holy Spirit, you're the teacher tonight. Move in this place. Send the revelation that we need that will cause the growth that we need. Open our eyes tonight and let us see ourselves, not our neighbor, not the one beside us, not the one in front of us, but let us see ourselves in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, honor, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. Be seated in God's presence. Go ahead and grab your Bibles for me. And we're going to, we're going to Luke 17. We're going to just read that, that, that opening verse that we um, established as our um, foundational, foundational scripture. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Luke chapter 17. And verse 1, then said he unto, unto the disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. So now we understand that we are dealing with the spirit or, or, or let's just say offense. Can we just say that? Let's just say offense so we can keep it in the context of the book. Okay? But we know it's a spirit. We know that offense is a spirit. We know that, uh, we, you know, we, I, I, I don't want to rehash a lot of the stuff that we talked about last week, but we understand that, um, we understand that we cannot function properly when we are under the spirit or the spirit of offense has trapped us. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to get a little plainer as you read ahead or as we begin to go a little further in this book. I think it's an excellent book for this spirit. Um, I'm, on, I'm on page seven. And um, are you there? First paragraph, the deceptive trap. Okay, this is the, the, the deceptive trap. All right, there's a trap that the enemy Satan has. Satan is our adversary. According to 1 Peter chapter five and verse eight. He says, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we establish the point that we have an adversary. Okay? The adversary hates us. He's not our friend. Can we agree? So he is out to do whatever he can do to stop, maybe destroy, come on, hinder, Amen. He is the accuser of the brethren. He's a lot of different things, is he not? Yeah. All right. So why do we get so worked up or get so 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 surprised? Let me use that word. Why are we so surprised when he do it? Man, I tell you, the devil, every time I turn, well, why are you so surprised? He already told you what he came to do. Right. All right? So look at look at that first paragraph. The Greek word for the word for offend in Luke 17. And when it comes from the word scandalon, it comes from the word scandalon. This word originally referred to the part of the trap which the bait is attached. So the enemy puts the, the, the bait on the trap. The bait that he puts on the trap is what? Offense. offense. Once we pick up the offense, we become offended. offended. Okay? It ain't nothing wrong with debate as long as it's on the trap. Right. Okay. It's only after we partake of or take it up off the trap. How, how do we, let me ask this question. How do we become offended? Somebody raise their hand and tell me. Give, me. give me some ways that we can be offended. 
Lord Jesus. <laughs> how you gonna know you're offended if you don't know how you're gonna be offended? Yes, sir. Um, whenever somebody says something about you. Whoo, okay. That's one. Somebody says something about you. Yes, ma'am. Operating in our feelings, moving on our feelings, because we wear our feelings on our shoulders or our sleeve as a person. Okay, so operating our feelings can cause us to become offended. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, not forgiving somebody. Not forgiving somebody. Okay, all those things are good. All right. Uh, what, what about somebody telling you the truth? Oh, that, that do it. Right? Huh? What about somebody telling you about something that you're doing that you don't like them telling you about what they're doing? Right, that do it. See? Mm -hmm. Who you think you're talking about? Now, now here, here's the first thing that most of us say when somebody hits something that we don't like. Well, well you do the same. Well, what about what you do? What about what you do? I said, well, well, we ain't talking about me. We, we, we talking about what's, what you're doing. Anybody guilty of that? Amen. Come on, everybody up there have their hand up. We all guilty of it. When you hit that sore spot, like when you hit the spot, my hand go up. What about you? All right. So, so that bait on the trap, that part in which the bait is attached to, hence the word signifies laying a trap in someone's way. In the New Testament, it often describes an entrapment used by the enemy. Offense is a tool of the devil to bring people into captivity. It's a bait. The enemy is always looking for ways to trap us. The enemy, which was the Pharisees and the scribes, they always tried to figure out a way to trap Jesus. So why are we so surprised when the enemy sent people to us to try to entrap us with the same thing. Okay? Satan ain't gonna come himself. Amen. He gonna use, watch this, you ain't gonna like this. He gonna use the closest one to you. That's it. Okay, and he'll use us. Amen. Now, amen that now. Amen. See? Hey amen, come on, we, because Satan don't have no respect of persons who he wants to use. Right. He's looking just like God. He's looking for a willing vessel. Oh, my God. Yeah, God looking for somebody to show himself strong in. What do you think Satan want to do? Amen. You want to stand up in you. <laughs> okay, here's the scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 24 through 26. Now, this is Paul. Paul is instructing Timothy on some things. Timothy was who? Paul's spiritual son. son. Okay? He was educating him on some things because Paul, because Timothy was a young pastor. All right? He was a young pastor. Okay? He said, and look at look at the verse. And a servant, and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. So we can't be confrontational. We can't be ones that go around stirring up stuff. That's right. Amen? Amen. We can't be one going around running our mouth about people, slandering folk. Amen. All right? Listen to this. I believe this is attached to the second part of the scripture that we read in, in Luke 17, verse, uh, verse 1, the, B, the, the let's see, the C portion. But woe unto him through whom they come. We got to be careful that we don't offend people willingly. Okay? Because that's a judgment unto us. If you know that you, what you get ready to tell somebody or do to somebody is going to cause them to be offended, you are more guilty than they are. Okay? Because watch this. Now, the Bible makes it plain. Minister Sun said this Sunday, said he said, wait, well, everything that he read Sunday was in red. What, what color is this in your Bible? It should be in red, okay? Look, look, look at what he says in the second verse of seven, uh, Luke 17 and 2. It were better for him that a millstone was tied about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Amen. So when we offend somebody purposely, we get ready to get ourselves in trouble. When we, when we offend somebody purposely, we invite the judgment of God to come upon us. Amen. Let's, just, let's just be real about it now. Okay, let's just be real about it, and, 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 and let's just stop. And let's just stop playing around and, and just just coming at people because we feel like uh, we got to tell them something. 
Be careful with telling, going to people when you're angry. That's right. Come on now. Be careful trying to go to people when you're angry. All right? It's not going to turn out good. Let's read the next verse. We, we're on page 7. We ran in the middle of the page here. We read the scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 24 through 26. Listen to this. Uh, and the servant of the Lord must not be quarrel, must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Look at that. Able to teach. Come on, patient. In humility. Correcting those who are in opposition. Okay, now we got to know. Oh, God. Let, let me read the rest of this. I got to say this. Let me read the rest of this. In opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. Now, 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 is this saying that God may not grant everybody repentance? No, because repentance goes to everybody. Right. Yeah. Huh? But I think it's 2nd, uh, look at 2nd, uh, 2nd Corinthians chapter 7. Let's look at verse 10. Let me see if that's what I'm looking for. 2nd Corinthians chapter 7 and 10. I want you to re really be listening to what God is saying through this lesson here now. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Are you, are you looking at 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10? Yeah. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to, unto salvation. Uh, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So when we are truly remorseful, uh -huh. then true repentance will happen. What is repentance? Somebody say change. change. Then you got to change direction, change your mind, change your mood. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes we got bad moods. I'm in a bad mood today. Well, you need to repent. Now look, look at this right here. It says so that they may, I'm back in, I'm back in the scripture in, in, in the book, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare or entrapment of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So when you walk around offended, you are a tool for the enemy. You are a breeding ground. Hey Amen. You, you angry. She coming, she coming, she coming, boy. You angry. <laughs> you angry. <laughs> Listen, you angry? <laughs> I ain't messing with you. Listen, you you angry? So all the enemy got to do is when you be when you angry, all he got to do is drop a seed. My God, that's how he do. That's simple. He gonna drop a seed because your ground is right. Can't nobody approach you. Can't nobody talk to you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the enemy has already got you entrapped. By the spirit of offense. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me show you. Let me, let me show you what I wrote down now. Correcting an offended person, you must have the correct approach. Mm -hmm. You cannot correct an offended person all kind of ways. You can't. You can't. You can't. I, don't, I don't want to go too too far too fast because I know the scriptures in here. I ain't, I ain't see it in this chapter, but. Uh, I ain't, see it in, I ain't see it in this chapter, but anyway, we'll get to it. Uh, matter, matter of fact, I probably need to go ahead and give it to you. But anyway, uh, the, one I, the one I really want to deal with is give me Proverbs 15 and 1. I really want to deal with this one because, you know, when a person is offended, we don't need to attack them. We need to minister to them. We got to show them the error of their way now. And, 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 that's, and that's where the fight going to come in at. Amen. Proverbs 15 and 1. Read the Bible. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So a soft answer turns away anger, wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So when I approach the person, I got to approach them with a soft answer. I got to approach them. My conversation got to be right. If you angry and I'm angry, you might wear it's gonna be somebody might wear get the popcorn. Okay. Y'all go ahead and hire a referee or somebody gonna y'all go in some rounds. <laughs> hey man, come on now. You know how it is when you got two mad people. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody might be somebody might bring a gun or something. I mean, come on, man. These people crazy now. 
All right. So, 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 so this is a part of this is a part of how you approach the person, and this is a part of woe, the woe part of, of Luke 17 and one. Woe unto the one through offense come through. So we got to be careful how we deal with people concerning those that are offended. Give me, sec, give me Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't even see these last night when I was studying it. I hear the Lord, though. Yeah, I hear the Lord. Yeah, read the Bible. Brethren, if a man be... Now, wait a minute now. He said brother. It don't mean people on the outside. It don't mean sinners. No sinners it shouldn't be your brother. Talk to me now. Yeah, what up, bro? Bro what? Bro ham? <laughs> If you're brothering. Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fault. Hold right there. That fault can be offense. If a brother be offended, he says, now ye that are Spirit. a spiritual, Spirit. not carnal. We got to stay spiritual. So that means when I approach you, no matter how you react, I can't get in my flesh. That's good right there, because someone's getting out there. Who you think? Come on up. Who you think you're talking to? You say, what you want? You know, you know, foolish we get. You say, what you want? Like, you don't want no anointing whooping. Oh, my God. <laughs> Brethren, if a brother is overtaken in the phone, he that are spiritual, talk to me. Restore. Oh, God. And they said, it said, restore such a one. Hold it right there. So now my assignment, when I come, to, when I see a brother or sister that's been that's that's walking in the fence, my assignment is to help them get restored, bring them back into the fold. Amen. Because most offended people, they don't attend church much. My God, come on. Woo. Most offended people isolate themselves. They don't want to be bothered with nobody. Amen? Wow. Come on, I'm that I, 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 because this stuff ain't I can get real deep in now. Okay? And, and I know I saw myself in here in a few places. Right. Amen. So you got to work out your own salvation. Right. Yeah, when you see this, don't go tell them, oh, that's me right now. No, don't say nothing. <laughs> no, just start working on what, you know what, the Holy Spirit is revealing to you by you. Amen. Okay? All right? So, so, so you that a spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness? Consider thyself, uh -huh. lest thou also be tempted. Come on now, so 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 treat them like you want to be treated. Come on now. See? Don't don't look, cause, cause, because a lot of times you're dealing with offended people. You know, maybe you don't need to give them those scriptures. Uh -oh. Talk about the record now. That's what you mean. Maybe you don't need to give them, maybe you don't need to give them no scriptures. Maybe you just need to talk to them. That's right. You ain't got to come out in the spirit because you talk regular. Don't say that all. No, 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 don't say that all. Maybe they one day, maybe they, that's not the approach that you have to use. That hey, how you doing? Right. You know, ain't in a praise the Lord. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe, they, maybe they don't want to hear all that. <laughs> you know, because hurt people. You know what I found out about a hurt animal? Mm -hmm. A hurt animal don't want you to approach them because they think you're gonna hurt them some more. That's right. How you think people are? The same way. Yeah, when they when they see when they see somebody come down, especially if you religious. Dress all the way down to the flow. You look, you got to look. Okay. Okay, mouth white. <laughs> you know. And, 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 and you, you, you approach them talking about, we need, we just came over here to pray for them. Maybe they don't, maybe you don't need to pray yet. <laughs> I'm just, man, I'm just telling you how you see some of these people, man. Maybe you don't need to pray for them yet. Maybe you need to, maybe you just talk to them. Right. You know, ask them how they doing. Amen. Hey, man. Come on, what happened to the love? He said, with love and kindness, have I drawn thee. Amen? Because now watch this. Now, in Galatians 6 and 1, brother, if, if a brother be overtaken the fault, uh, if, you, if you catch them, in, if you catch them cutting up in, in public, cover them. Mm -hmm. Then when you get them in private, rebuke them uh -huh. and correct them then. That's right. Don't do it in public. Hey, well, watch this. Here's the quickest way to offend somebody in a congregation. Saying stuff to them around everybody. Right. Come on, talk to me. Yeah. Amen. You ain't got to say, maybe you need to go out there with Man. Maybe you need to whisper to them. Come on. Right. Say it. Right. Yeah. Okay. I know it's you. All right. <laughs> 
So let us read the next paragraph. Those who are, are in quarrels or opposition, they fall into the trap and they are held prisoners to do the devil's will. When you are, I'm telling you, when you are offended, man, let me tell you something. You are capable of anything. Anybody been there? Man, you ain't spiritual. Some stuff come out your mouth that you thought you thought was gone. Now, nah, come on. I wish them ninjas would. You ready to fight? Like, man, what's up? I thought you. I thought you got delivered. Yeah, I got delivered, but it came back. I'm ready. Not a game back. He ain't never went nowhere. You just suppressed it. Yeah, that thing, because I'm telling you, this is how you know whether you really forgave people or not. Do you know, when I keep telling you, when you're fasting, what's in you will always surface. Mm -hmm. It'll always surface, the ugly. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good to fast, the ugly come up. You do know that, right? Yeah, yeah stuff, stuff you ain't never, you, you thought was going, it started coming up. Somebody pull out in front of you and then shoot the bird at you. Ooh. You floor and get next to him. You say something, though. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Amen. Tell the truth. So listen to this. Even more alarming, they are unaware of their captivity. Like the prodigal, they must come to themselves by awakening their true condition. Mm -hmm. We got to confess that we have a problem first. Yes. You remember I talked to you about the 12 steps of AA? Yeah. If you look at the 12 steps of AA, I promise you, all of them are connected to Scripture. The first one is to admit that you have a problem. We got to confess our sins according to 1 John 1 9. We got to confess first. If you don't, it's just like coming to the altar for prayer. If you don't say what it is that you need prayer for, then God really ain't going to work on it. I ain't going to say nothing. He already know. We, we know that. But he said, make your request known. Oh, man. That's right. That's right. He said, confess your faults one to another. That's right. Amen. Amen. Then he said, pray one for another in the affection with fervent prayer of a righteous man that it'll avail much. I don't want nobody to pray me. I don't want nobody to know my condition. We see your condition. Come on. We part. sick of your condition. Come on. That part. You <laughs> sick of your condition. That part. See? Let's just be real. Let's just be real. Here. Can we just be real? Yeah. When you got something going on, you ain't the only one that see it. We sometimes we see it too. Amen. We've been waiting for you to say something. We've just been waiting for you to say something. Amen. Amen. Because let me tell you something. You know, a lot of us, when we come into certain churches, we we are skeptical. Let's just be honest about it. We're skeptical. We're very skeptical. You know, and, and ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, you call it, uh, you call it, you call it suspicion, or you, you know, you people got a different times they call it, but you really, you skeptical. You you want to see what's going on. And that's the right spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? But six months later, wow. are you still skeptical? <laughs> and God has stood there up on your head three services? <laughs> <laughs> and you still think it ain't God? <laughs> that was yeah, come on. The word, right? Mm -hmm. You see people get delivered, set free, healed. The word is powerful. Mm -hmm. Come on. My God. See? Help yeah. And you still sitting there. I don't know. You don't know what? You don't know Jesus? I mean, what? what? Trying to figure out what you don't know. All right. Can we talk, can we talk a little bit more? So watch this now. Look at this. They do not re realize that they are spewing out bitter waters rather than pure. When a person is deceived, he believes he is right even though he is not. Have you ever been, have you ever been in that place where you thought, that you was right and everybody else was wrong? For sure. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So Proverbs 14 and verse 12 said, but there's a way that seemeth seem right. Seem right unto a man. On, man. You know? So now, if, if, if watch this. If everybody telling you the same thing, it might be a problem. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. If everybody's seeing the same thing and you don't see it, you have been deceived. <laughs> the enemy has wrapped a blindfold around your spiritual eyes. Because you're looking to see it in the natural. You're looking to see it in the natural. It's in the spirit. Got to get in the spirit to see some things. All right? All right. Look, look, look this right here. No matter what the scenario is, we can divide all offended people into two categories. Those who have been treated unjustly 
of those who believe that they have been treated unjustly. Which category are you in? Which category are you got to be in? It's personal now. Watch this. People in the second category, they believe with all their hearts that they have been wronged. They don't like me. Y'all just don't understand. And then sometimes you can be right. But you ain't right. All the time. All the time. Yeah, we all been wrong. We all sin to come short of the glory at some point. Yeah. So watch this. So often their conclusions are drawn from inaccurate information. Or their information is accurate, but their conclusion is distorted. Either way, they hurt and their understanding is darkening. When you walk around still hurt, you can't see clearly. Mm. Your understanding is darkened. Wow. The enemy, I'm telling you, the enemy, he puts a shade in front of you. Wow. He lets you see what he wants you to see, and what you need to see, you can't see. Right. Amen. See, when, and then when you get healed from the hurt, you see through a different set of lenses. It's like, it's like you need glasses and you know you need glasses but you don't go get the glasses. You, you, you hurt. You know you need to be healed but you don't let God heal you. Mm. Wow. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody tonight. Your first step in getting healed is tell God you hurt him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever you got to do to get the hurt out, you got to do that. Amen. It's like grieving. If you don't grieve every loss, you got to go through the grieving process. Everything that you lose. That's right. Everything, I'm telling you, everything, a job, a car, a house, spouse, a mother, father, everything you lose, you got to go through a grieving process. Because there's an attachment to that thing that if you don't cut it, you don't cut it loose, it'll, it'll, it'll get shut up in you. I'm telling you, man, some people we just need to grieve. Yeah. Even in a relationship, if a boyfriend or somebody left you, treated you wrong, you got to grieve it. Yeah, man. Grieve it. Wow. If a pet died, you got to grieve it. It sounds great. I'm telling you. I'm right. yeah. real. You got to grieve it. If you lost a bestie, you ain't done nothing to the bestie. Mm -hmm. And they should start treating you wrong for whatever reason, you got to grieve that thing. Amen. I'm, watch this right here. You Amen. believe it or not, there's some ministry that you left. That's right. Come on now. You got to grieve them. Make it plain. Amen. Because we were attached to them. Come on, let's be honest now. You know that. See, see, a lot of pastors, uh, leaders, what they do? A lot of leaders attach their souls to the people. And then you wonder, watch this. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. And you wonder why it's so hard to let go. You keep gravitating back because there's a soul tie. My God, help us out today. Wow. It's a soul tie. Mm. Yeah, you can think it's gone. I'm telling you. And you find yourself gravitating back. You don't know why. Soul tie. Mm. You know you need to cut it loose, but you don't. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's okay for us. Everybody, everybody don't process the same way. Right. But most of us, we cry. Amen. If you don't cry, Jesus. something wrong with you. Right. God gave you tear ducts for a reason. Right. <laughs> this crying, this ain't the kind of crying out he was talking about. Yeah. This crying I'm talking about is a release. Yeah. Say, it's a pain reliever. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Some of us are just miserable. We're miserable. We don't know what to do with ourselves. Wow. Amen. Jesus. We don't talk to everybody. Yep. We're like the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. We don't been to everybody and they ain't made us no better. Jesus. You know what you need? Jesus. Come on. Amen. Uh -huh. I'm just being honest. Amen. You run into everything and everybody. You just need to, you need to get to him. Amen. If I can just touch him. Yeah. Amen. You get a touch from him, I promise you, to turn things around. So they judge by assumption, appearance, and hearsay. Let's look at the heart. Any, anybody got any questions? Anybody? I don't, I don't want to make this a make this a lecture. Anything. All right, I'm gonna move then. Because we're here to get free. Amen. Okay? Now I want you to understand that that that, that Satan is slick. Mm -hmm. 
He is very good at what he does. Right. You know how long Satan been doing what he's been doing? Over 6,000 years. Let's just say for the sake of, uh, 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 let's just say for the sake of not trying to add up, be accurate, over 6,000 years. All right? Okay. At least that long. Now, if you've been doing something, so you, you've been sinning for a year. <laughs> you good at that now. Okay. You got that thing perfected. Right. Now, that's one year. Think about 6,000 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And then he saw, he deceived the first couple. God, come on now. That's good right there. And they were perfect. <laughs> and we ain't perfect now, but they were perfect. That's good right See? There. But we're gonna try to we're gonna try to come up against him flat footed. Come on, Satan! Yeah, he coming. He ain't got to go. Alright, the, the the heart's true condition. One way the enemy keeps a person in an offended state uh, is to keep the offense hidden. Cloak with pride. How can the enemy cloak offense with pride? Somebody help me tonight. How, how do you think he, how do you think, what are some ways that he can cloak something? Yes, ma'am. So you got to talk loud because they listen to you on, on live. Just so that you don't think that you're wrong about it. Okay, just so you don't think you're wrong about it. Come on, anybody else? <laughs> what, what, what about, what about he don't want you to say nothing because he don't want nobody to help you out of it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. What about pride? Coming in and saying, I don't have a problem. Yeah. Right. See? Mm -hmm. Amen. Pride will, will, make you, will make you keep your mouth shut. Pride will keep you from admitting your true condition. That's right. It will. Uh -huh. Okay, let's, let's read on. Now, 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 the writer is getting ready to tell us about an episode that he had. He said, once I was severely hurt by a couple of ministers. Anybody been hurt by people in the church? Yes. Amen. Oh, you need to be healed then. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to this. He said, people would say, I can't believe they did, that, they, they did this to you. Aren't you hurt? I would respond quickly, no, I'm fine. I'm not hurt. I knew it was wrong to be offended, so I denied and repressed it. Some of us, we are offended. We say we're not. We play like we're okay, and we, re we, we are pressing it or repressing it. We're putting it to the back, the back burner, in other words. Why? Because we don't want to deal with it. Deal huh? With it. Yeah. Some people, we don't want to cut off because we don't want to tell them no. My God. Hello, come on, talk to them. It's okay. Right. Yeah. Huh? Because when, watch this. Now, I hope that something ain't got to happen for you to cut them off. I hope that don't happen. I'm, te I'm telling you, because a lot of times it, it, it takes something happening That's right. for us to see that what they, what somebody was telling me we're right. Okay, all right. Turn that ninja loose. Somebody tell you, say, 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 say for instance, it's a relationship. And you know the joker might be good to you, but he might not be good for you. Come on, that's right. And it's hard to turn them loose when they're good to you. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Hey man, talk to me. Hey, man, that's how sin is. Sin is good to me, but I know it ain't good for me. So it's hard to turn it loose. You know why? Because sin causes my flesh to feel good. Come on now, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Sin is only appeasing, uh, only appeasing to the flesh. Lust of the eye, lust of the, the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He says, well, let's look at what he says, and then he says. I convinced myself I was not, but in reality, I was. Pride masked the true condition of my heart. Don't let pride keep you in a prison. Okay? Don't, don't, don't be in a place where you can't tell people really how you feel. Right. Amen. Because you're not really in a relationship with nobody if, you, if the relationship ain't, bo ain't, ain't both ways. That's right. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I don't care marriage... Uh, engagement, Amen. it don't matter. That's right. You should be able to, y'all should be able to talk about anything and everything. Uh -huh. now, now watch this, now here, now here are some red flags. If you start talking to these people about this stuff from the beginning, and you ain't married yet, and they bugging down, and they cringing all up, that's going to be a problem. Okay. Because they got something to hide. 
Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, let me tell you something. Before you marry somebody, y'all got to come together and open and put everything on the table. That's what you got to look. No skeleton. Open the closet. Bring all the skeletons out. Amen. 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 Okay? All right. Uh, pride, look, look, look at this. Pride keeps you from dealing with the truth. It distorts your vision. You never change when you think everything is fine. That's right. That's right. You never change. Pride hardens your heart and dims your eyes of understanding. That's what pride, pride blinds us. Mm -hmm. It blinds us. It don't want us to see what we need to see. Mm -hmm. It keeps you from, from changing from the, from the change of heart, which is repentance that will set you free. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. It wanna get, Satan want to keep me by myself. Right. So he can talk to me. So he can tell me, them people can't help you. Them people don't like you. Come on. That's right. That's what that, that, that's the kind of stuff he said. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing Satan say that's positive. Nothing. You ever heard liars have a good conversation? No, you ain't. <laughs> oh, well, you know, they told me some good stuff. I know that's why you that's why you didn't try. Wow. Yeah. Oh, pride causes you to view yourself as the victim. That's what I want to get to. Yeah. Pride causes you to view yourself as as the victim. As the victim. Your attitude becomes, I was mistreated and misjudged, therefore, I'm justified in my behavior. You ain't justified by your behavior. You hurt, you need to be healed. You offended, and you need to be delivered from it. That's what it is. Amen? We, we, look, we, 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 we can deal with the other stuff, but let's deal with the real issue at hand first. Can we do that? Huh? Amen. Because you know, you know what, you know what the enemy, you know what the enemy does a lot of times? He'll make people try to hide what's going on with them when they come to the altar because they come up and they try to cry. They try, they try to cover what's really going on by emotion. Because huh? he because Satan is the he's the god of emotion. He is. You start operating in your feelings, you always stay in bondage. In the kingdom, feelings are in the soul realm. Yeah, in the soul realm. I, I, I just ain't feeling that. I feel some kind of way. You need to be delivered because you're offended. Offend, look, offense is, is easing in and you don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. It's sneaking right in. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I, I don't feel that. Nobody asked you what you felt. <laughs> Yeah, they might tell what you what you felt. And, 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 and listen, and then when somebody starts telling you about some of the stuff that you need to quit, you really get worked up. Your voice, your, your voice go, your voice go from five to ten. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the neighborhood can hear you. <laughs> Think about it. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Now you're mad. Ah, oh, y'all don't want to talk tonight. Right. Ooh, loosen the buns up, baby. Loosen them up. Loose them up. Loose them up. <laughs> Listen. Because you believe you are innocent and falsely accused, now you hold back forgiveness. Mm. You done said some things that you shouldn't have said because somebody said something to you, and now you don't want to say, because saying I'm sorry about something is a form of forgiveness. It is. Yeah. Why, why is that so hard to say? I'm sorry. Huh? Why, why, why? Some people don't took that out of their vocabulary. Took it off the list. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. What about this one? I'm wrong. It was my fault. Watch this now because... If you're not careful, you'll say what I just said about it's my fault, and you'll stay there. And then it'll become a crutch. Because what you do, you know what you, you know what you'll end up doing if you're not careful? You'll start playing the victim through that. Watch this. I'm always wrong. It's always my fault. I can't never do nothing right. Oh my God. I'm telling you that door. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 what 
you'll start doing this because you don't want to deal with it. You'll say in the middle of the conversation, all right, then, well, well, yeah, it was my fault. We'll be through with it. Because you, you don't want them to go no further with it. Mm, you want to close the door on it, but you need to open the door wide so God can come in and sweep the room out. That's right. See? So you can get free. Man, do you know there's a lot of people that have heart attacks because of unforgiveness, you, you bitterness, sickness, all this stuff. I'm telling you, blood pressure go up. Stress kills people because they don't want to forgive. Or they don't want to do, and when you don't want to deal with something, it's like, you, 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 you know, if you got a clogged radiator on your car, after a while the pipe going to swell, and after a while it ain't going to swell, it's going to explode. Right, right. That's us. Because when we're not free, something's clogged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know what? We, we can't even focus. Right. And let's be real tonight about the thing now. We can't, even be, we can't even focus. Somebody's standing there talking to you. And you, you, huh? Yeah. So I said, what did I just say? Say it again. Say it, say it again. <laughs> because we can't focus because we got, look, our mind. All that stuff going on in your mind. You can't even, you can't, I'm talking about you can't even, you, 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 can't, you can't grasp nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. You always got to be doing something. Mm -hmm. You always got to be doing something. You can't sit still because you don't want to deal with what you got going on. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. See, he, he said in, in, in Psalms 46 and 10, be still and know that I'm God. He don't mean not move around. He means relax. Yeah. Yeah. Sit in my presence. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Yeah. Let me talk to you. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You feel like everything that you got to do has got to be done in 10 minutes. <laughs> you running around in circles like a dog chasing his tail. You ain't getting nothing done. Mm -hmm. In the course of a day, and you exhausted. You miss Mr. or Mrs. Fix it. I'm telling you. But then when it's time for somebody to help you get fixed. Oh, my God. oh I'm good. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> All right. So, watch this. Though your true heart condition is hidden from you, and say from everybody else, it is not hidden from God and those around you now. Just because you were mistreated, you don't, you don't have permission to hold on to offense. Two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah, yeah, don't break the windows out. Don't flatten the ties. What, 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 what is that going to fix? Only thing it shows is, I love you. He left you, but you going to flatten the ties. What did that say to him? Yeah, I still got him. That's right. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this real talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She still loved me. That's right. Something. Girl, go get me some gas. <laughs> Bring this car up. Okay. We got a little bit. Can we talk about the cure? Yes, sir. In the, here's the cure. In the book of Revelation, Jesus addressed the church of Laodicea by first telling them how they saw how they saw themselves as rich, wealthy, and having need of nothing. Then, by exposing their true condition, he said, "You're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked." Mm -hmm. See, because they were looking out with it. See, most times we just look out with it. Most times we just fix up outside and we walk around and, and, and make everybody on the outside thinking that we good. That is so true. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah. Because you know, a lot of times, you know why people sometimes talk so much? Because they don't want you to ask them really how they're really doing. Come on. That's good. They don't, they, they don't want you to really ask them. I mean, because if, if I get close to you and I look in your eyes, I don't know what's going on. Ah, man. Yeah. So. <laughs> Listen to this. They had mistaken their financial strength for spiritual strength. Pride hid, hid their true condition. Pride will hide what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. You, you, pride, pride calls you the thing that uh, I'm more high up. You, the, the, the thing more high of yourself than you ought to. That's what pride is. Amen. 
to think more highly of yourself. Mm -hmm. So what you do is, is you'll try to cover whatever it is that you don't want to show. Right. You don't want nobody to deal with the real you, mm -hmm. so you cover it with stuff. Wow. You get your hair done. Uh -huh. You get your neck. Because you try to make yourself feel good, but it ain't working. Yeah. That's why you keep adding stuff, too. After a while, you're a monster. Jesus. <laughs> your hair down to here. It was up here last week. <laughs> Huh? I'm just saying. Yeah. You trying to, I'm telling you, because you're trying to help you, you're trying to help your self-esteem. But you're trying to build you're trying to build your ego the wrong way. The wrong way. That's good. That's good stuff. Mm, okay. We, we talked about we're talking about the cure here. So so watch this. Many are this way today. They do not see the true condition of their heart, just as I was unable to see the, the resentment I carried toward those ministers. He said, I had convinced myself. Somebody cut that joke like his own. I had convinced myself that I was not hurt. Jesus told the Laodiceans how to get out of their, their condition by God's goal and see their true condition. By God's goal. Let's keep reading. Jesus' first instruction for breaking free from deception was to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Mm -hmm. So we got to go through the process of letting God do it. Yeah, we keep running to people. People can't fix people can't some things. Right. That's right. Okay? Because see, what God will do is he'll help, he'll help the people around you to help reveal what it is, yeah. but the fire of God has got to burn it out. Yeah. And we don't like that part. That part. Yeah, we don't like, we don't like the fire. Because fire burns. Fire changes everything it comes into contact with. Yeah. Listen to this. Uh, that was in Revelation 3.18. Refiner's fire is, is, is soft and pliable. I'm sorry, refined gold is soft and pliable. Free from corruption and other substances, it is when gold is mixed with other metals, copper, iron, nickel, and so on, that it becomes hard, less pliable, and more corrupted. This uh, mixture is called aloe. The higher the percentage of foreign metals, the higher the gold, the, the harder gold becomes. Conversely, the lower percentage of aloe is softer and more flexible. Immediately we see the parallel. A pure heart is like pure gold. Soft, pliable, soft, tender, and pliable. Hebrew 3.13 states that the, heart, that the hearts are hardened through deceitfulness of sin. So if you got a hard heart, it's because you have not dealt with something in your heart. And it's got a blockage there. You know, if you have a hardened arteries... It can cause uh, 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 blood clots or something. To, uh, it, it'll cause uh, uh, heart attacks. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. yeah. So, so the reason I believe that God dealt with the heart is because it's the center of man. Come on. Right. Yes. It's good. Yeah, God wanted to be in the center of our life. Well, yes. Good. You got to make him the center of your joy. That's right. Yeah. You can't put him on your back and carry him. You got to carry him in your heart. Yeah, God Almighty. Watch this. So if we don't deal with an offense, it'll produce more fruit of sin, mm. such as watch people walk around bitter, yeah. angry, and resentful. Got resentment. Mm. This added substance it hardens our heart just as aloe hardens gold. Mm. So when you got stuff in your heart against somebody, yeah. you're not free. Wow. They go on about their business, about their but business. you sitting over there at the canteen. In jail. Yeah. Okay. I started telling my kids about the canteen. They didn't know what I was talking about. I had to tell them I had been to jail. Anyway. <laughs> so watch this. This reduces or removes tenderness. It creates a loss of sensitivity. When you got stuff in your heart, don't tell me you're hearing God. Because the first one, hearing God even for somebody else, because the first one he deal with is going to be you. Come on. That part. That's right. And you got so much prophetic word for somebody. Now, if your life jacked up, don't prophesy to me. Well, okay. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, take, take that word and you apply it to you. You get free. Well, look at what Jesus tells Peter. Satan desires to sift you. I pray that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, then. When thou art delivered, then strengthen thy brother. Come on. See, we're trying to help people. Now, if we can help some people, we can help people, and they still have a condition. I'm not saying that. But your life jacked all the way up. I, gotta, I might have a little problem with that now. 
And it all depends on, matter of fact, it all depends on what you're struggling with. You're struggling with, you know, smoking dope and all that. You can't help me. <laughs> you smoking weed, you in the wrong spirit. Come on. Yeah, that, 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 that's a spirit of uh, sorcery. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. ah, okay. You, you, it's a, it's, it's a hallucinant. Right. So what you might be seeing and sensing in the spirit, you might be in the wrong spirit. Mm, wow. Hey Amen. You can't tell me because what, 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 what marijuana is, it's a mood altering chemical. It changes everything. Yeah, you smoke one and then it lowers your eyes. You can't see. But you know what gives me about the whole thing? The, the heart, the blood from your heart rush to your eyes. And your eyes is red. So now your heart is barely beating. But you want to talk about the say it all. <laughs> you hide in Cooter Brown. Okay. The say it all. The say it all, you need to get sober. Oh, and then you need to get delivered. Okay. Yeah. Okay? So listen to this. We are hindered in our ability to hear God's voice. Our accuracy to see is darkened. This is a, 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 a perfect setting for deception. When we don't when our heart is cluttered with stuff. It's a perfect breeding ground for deception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to allow somebody to get to us. Amen. That's why we, that's why we got to have that, that battle buddy, man. We got to have somebody that we are accountable to on a regular basis. You got to have somebody, listen to me real careful. You got to have somebody that you can get real intimate with and tell them everything that's going on with you. Right. The, the internet don't mean what you think. That's right. I'm talking about being open with them, and you can get naked with them and show and share with them some stuff that you're really struggling with. Right. Amen. But the Bible, we got to confess this stuff to somebody. But I'm gonna go to God. God gonna tell you to go back to somebody. Right. Why do you think you put all these people on there for you to bypass them? I'm gonna, I'm gonna wiggle them through all these right here and get to God. And then God gonna wiggle back through you, have you wiggle back through them and get to them. <laughs> We try to get so deep. God and God can do everything, but He ain't. That's right. All right. He ain't. He could have did it. He could have. He could have. He could have redeemed man back to Him in a lot of different ways, but He didn't. Amen. He used a man. That's right. Jesus was all man and all God at the same time. I ain't gonna try to explain it tonight. Listen to this. So the first step in refining gold is grinding it into powder and mixing it with a, a substance called flux. So we need to be grind. We need to, we need to decrease. The flux is the Holy Ghost. We need to mix the Holy Ghost, get the Holy Ghost in us so it can get all of the stuff that draws out of us. Amen. See, 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 gold, go, when you first find gold, it's black as coal. So it's got to go through a process. So they got to put something with it and then run it through the process of gold and fire. And, and, and a, boil, a boiling process so all the draws can rise to the top. Right. And all the gold will go to the bottom. Where you at? You're on the top of the bottom. I can tell you what you are if you tell me where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God raising me up where he's bringing me down. Mm. Woo, God, watch this right here. Let, 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 let me read. It says here, it says, Then the mixture is placed in the furnace. Look at this. And melted, uh, melted by intense heat. The alloys and impurities are drawn to the flux and they rise to the surface. But you way up here. You up here with the stuff that's no good. <laughs> okay. All right, watch this. And it says the gold, which is heavier, remains at the bottom. The, the way up in God is down. That's right. See, we got to stay humble, y'all. Look at that. The impurities are dross, such as the copper, iron, and zinc, combined with the flux, and it is removed, yielding a pure metal. Now look at what God says. Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. I'll, I'll wait till I got there. I'll wait till I got there. You know why? Because we always try to get out of affliction. That's true. 
Now, one of the things that David said in Psalm 119, 67, 71, it's good that I was afflicted. He knew affliction was good because it was going to cause him to know the statutes of God. Come on now. It's good. So affliction is good. That's right. He caused the affliction, but he still knew the affliction could help him. Uh -huh. That's right. And you know what God does? What? God puts us in the midst of affliction. When we do stuff, God allowed the affliction to, 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 to refine us. Yes. We're trying to get out of the test. Mm. Stay in the test. Let God finish what he started in you. Let, look, go through the fire. Uh -huh. Go through the fire. Job said, when I'm trying, I'll come forth as gold. We got to say, people keep, oh, it's so hot. Hell is hotter. Hell is hotter and forever. All right. Okay, look at this right here. Uh, and again, this is you greatly. Re this in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while. If you, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Look at this. But the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than, than gold, uh, it, 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 it preserved. What did I say? Excuse me. That that gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to be. May, may, may be found to, pr to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Gold refines with affliction, test, which is trials, and tribulations. The heat of which separates impurity such as unforgiveness, strife, bitterness, anger, envy, and so forth from the character of God in our lives. Sin easily hides where there is no heat of, of trials and afflictions. So when you don't want to go through tests and trials, sin is going to be there. Wow, wow. Don't tell me you ain't going through nothing. I'll show you some sin in your life. Okay, amen. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm out. Either you coming out of a trial or you getting ready to go into one. Come on now. Right. You're telling the truth. And then sometimes you stay in one. Amen? Well, I mean, you, can, you can be doing what you're supposed to do, but, but see, to whom much is given, much is required now. And it's, it's, it's going to take a little more for more people, I mean, for some people. Okay? Because God may be calling you to a, to a deeper place in Him. When I say deep, it don't mean for everybody. I mean, it, it, I'm not telling you, you. You know when God calling you to another place. You'll know. You know. He want to let you sleep hardly. <laughs> You try to see your tall and turn. You get up in the morning, the bed feel on your head. Okay, that's real. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna, he gonna, he gonna get your attention one way or another. In times of prosperity and success, even a wicked man seems uh, kind and generous. Ain't that something? <laughs> Under the heat of trials, however, the impurity surface. So, 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 uh, thank God for the test and the trials. Amen. Yeah, thank God for them because God knows what He's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Learn how to trust God. I'm telling you. You know, I'm telling you, man, if you want to grow, you got to grow through some you got to go through some test and trials. Ain't no other way you're gonna grow in the kingdom. Ain't no other way. It just ain't. There's a cross waiting. <laughs> All of us. You you think you think you're gonna escape the cross? No. You can if you get out of the kingdom. <laughs> Right, that part. You think he's going to skip Gethsemane? Right. You can if you get out of the kingdom. You might as well tighten your belt, you tighten your belt up, lace up your boots, and let's go. Let's go. Yeah, we got some work to do. Amen. Yeah. I ain't think, I ain't think, I ain't think being, you know, being saved is going to be like this. What you thought it was going to be like? I thought I was going to have a house on the hill and, and, and a picket fence and... And, and, and I had a, a maid to take care of my children and, and a butler to bring my food to the bed and, and I guess you ain't gonna work either. So where you gonna get the money from? Come on. <laughs> I guess, I guess, I guess, oh God, huh? I guess, I guess, I guess they're gonna bring your job too. Oh, I forgot. You're gonna be a work work from home, have a work from home job. <laughs> Not. <laughs> we, I mean, we come in the kingdom and think, we think that God owes something. Yeah. We owe God something. Yeah. We owe God something, but we got it the other way around. You know, God told me He gonna give me a He gonna give me a house on the He gonna give me this. He gonna do this on. Yeah. What you gonna give Him? That's the question. That's the question. Yeah, you 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 require a whole lot from Him. He requires something from you too. Come on now. Right. 
Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah. He, see, God, God is looking at why you want what you want. Amen. Why you want what? Well, tell me why you want it. Tell me why you want it. Why? Yeah, why, I'm asking, why, why, why do you want what you want from God? You ain't asked for nothing spiritual. <laughs> Not yet. Well, I think give me the house and the car and a new job. Then I ask for something. <laughs> then I ask for the Holy Ghost. Why wow. don't you get the Holy Ghost first and then you might be able to speak some things into your life? Well, come on now. Say huh? Say come on now, I see. <laughs> yeah, because God, God know what you're ready for. He know what you're ready for. God will blow your mind, man. I'm telling you, he will. Listen to this. There, there was a time in my life, he's talking, uh, when I went through intense trials such as I had never faced before. I became rude, harsh with the closest, with those closest to me. He said, my family and friends began to avoid me. Now, you got some stuff going on when people start staying away from you. He said, I cried out to the Lord. Where is all the anger coming from? It wasn't here before. It was there all the whole while. It was, it was 